Folks, can there be any doubt that this is domestic terrorism run amok in South Africa? It continues unabated, unabated, absolutely senseless slaughter of innocent people. And a number of the victims are, of course, the most vulnerable. We've seen a blind man murdered in a brutal fashion in KwaZulu-Natal this summer, wintertime in South Africa, as the lockdown is lifted. We've seen a woman sexually assaulted, molested, and murdered. We've seen the murder of a 21-year-old farm manager. We've seen the throat sliced of a 26-year-old, four-month pregnant Indian mother at the Ayub farm near Venin with a four and eight year old child in the other room. We've seen the horrific abuse of the Braun family murdering an 83 year old man and a 73 year old mother and a disfigurement and murder of and abuse of their 54 year old daughter. No theft. The only consistent theme in all of these, these are vulnerable people who are isolated in South Africa and they're clearly targeted, not because they're wealthy, but because they're white. Now, they're not the only ones. Now, I mentioned the Indian. Uh, Indian's a different category in South Africa. But we could talk about farm managers if the press would only report the farm managers and farm laborers who are also murdered. Those deaths that we do know about here on Chris White Africa, we do report those sad situations, as we do with Temba in um, Soweto, where he was murdered by gangsters, Toitsi, after he helped his friend escape from them to get back to her home so she wouldn't be gang-raped and murdered by them. But we do report these deaths. And it's just one especially annoying as this involves a veteran. So I'll read this. This is courtesy of WeCanStopTheGenocide.com. I can't find this murder reported anywhere else in South Africa. If it has been reported, it certainly hasn't gotten a lot of attention because this occurred four days ago, at least four days ago, nearly five days ago at this point. Colonel David Eric Vessels, 66 years of age, a former soldier who was honored with the Honor of Croy gold medal, was found murdered on his farm just outside Fiyonenskong in the Free State. He served in the border war and completed several operations even after he lost his leg in a 1975 in the Battle of Novo Redondo. Now, he received the Honor Croy Medal for honor for bravery saving a wounded black soldier under fire. On the 25th of October 2020, his neighbor Ignaz Streicher went to investigate when foul play was suspected. He noticed that uh, Colonel Vasil's pickup truck was missing and that um, the burglar bars had been cut at one of the windows. So he began calling out for him. There was no response. He couldn't get in the house. They called the South African Police Service and the neighborhood watch. They came. They broke a window to gain entry, and they found his bloody body on a single bed in the spare room. According to Isna Streicher, Vessels fought back to the end. Several items were used to strangle and tie Colonel Vessels to the bed, and he was found with a plastic bag over his head. He sustained numerous head wounds in the attack, and there was suspicion that the injuries were inflicted with a camera tripod found near the body. The house was ransacked with drawers and cupboards forced open. Closed circuit television uh, footage shows the suspects leaving at around 6.20 in the morning with the colonel's vehicle. License plate clearly shown on his Toyota Hilux club cap. The registration, uh, Foxtrot Zulu Charlie 861 Foxtrot Sierra for the Free State. And they were last seen traveling towards Kuma and then later toward Femastriff and in the direction of Stilfontein. That's the only information available for the murder of this combat veteran who served South Africa. A man who was one-legged, 66 years of age, obviously tortured and beaten, tied to a bed, and then murdered with a plastic bag over his head in a gangster assassination style. Such is the state of public safety in Bekatile's gangster's paradise of South Africa, where 60 South Africans are murdered every day and the world says nothing. Where commercial white farmers are directly targeted and the war of domestic terrorism against them has been ramped up since lockdown standards have eased in a clear campaign orchestrated by someone whom we have no evidence of, but a clear campaign. The police arguments that these are simply random crimes, crimes of opportunity, sometimes crimes of revenge, simply does not hold water when we look at who is targeted and what happens here. There are lots of reasons why commercial farmers are attacked, not the least of which is they're vulnerable. But one of the key reasons why commercial farmers are attacked is because the racial hatred spewed by the economic freedom fighters in their call to their fighters to attack, to attack. Running around singing hate speech that's banned by the government, yet no consequences to anyone in the economic freedom fighters for singing the song, Kill the Boar, Shoot, Shoot to Kill, Kill the Boar. 
Boer, of course, being the Afrikaans and Dutch word for farmer, Boer. No repercussions whatsoever for the leader of the economic freedom fighters, the so-styled commander-in-chief, more likely the buffoon-in-chief, Julius Malema. No consequences for the party that trashed the city of Senegal on the 16th of October in a day in which they ostensibly went to Senegal to protect public property. Yet they ripped down street signs, crashed through barriers, broke concrete rubbish bins, yet they were protecting state property. What a load of malarkey this is. No consequences for the group that stood on the stage and their leader for 20 minutes spewed racial hatred. Virtually every sentence that came out of his foul sewage mouth is something that could be prosecuted for hate speech in South Africa and his banned speech in the country of South Africa. Yet no charges against Julius Malema. No charges against his number three in the party who stood on the same platform and sang a song, Call the Fire Brigade, Call the Fire Brigade, Burn the Boar, Burn them down, Burn them out. No charges preferred against that individual. And within 48 hours, 247,000 acres in the free state alone were torched by arsonists. Now, the government tried to cover up this arson by making the fraudulent, ludicrous claim that this was a service delivery protest. That's strange. At 4 a.m., people were out on the road protesting in the middle of a rural area against service delivery. Who exactly were they protesting to? Whom were they hoping to get his attention? Given that all South Africans are required to be at home at 4 a.m. unless they're an emergency services worker or a necessary worker. Certainly people protesting on the side of a road in the rural area, nowhere near journalists, nowhere near television cameras at 4 a.m., lighting tires and tossing them into fields dry in a tinderbox of the free state because there's been no rain. Surely these are not service delivery protests. What a load of horse manure. But that's what the government tries to tell people. While the South African government denies to the world that there are farm murders in South Africa, farmers are attacked every single day in an unending war. And while the racist, vile, disgusting hate speech spews from the mouth of leaders and the economic freedom fighters who are not charged with crimes for violating the South African Constitution and its law, this war picks up pace. The United Nations... Human Rights Commission, the South African Rights Humans Commission, Human Rights Commission, the European Union, the United States, the United Kingdom, Japan, China, Australia, New Zealand, Berlin, all sit silently while an ethnicity is stomped out, while a group of people who've harmed no one are the victims of a political war race-based political war, which ultimately is simply about who can steal the most and who the spoils go to. It's sad, it's unfortunate, and it's sad due to report today the murder of a combat veteran from the South African Force, 66-year-old Colonel David Eric Vessels, murdered on his farm on the 25th of October 2020 near Villons Krun in the Free State. A one-legged man who lost his leg in combat for his country saving in the Bush War. This disgrace is South Africa, ladies and gentlemen. The world must know. Hashtag the world must know. The silence must end. The world must know. Folks, if you're not a subscriber to Chris White Africa, I ask that you take a moment to become a subscriber. Feel free to leave a comment. Smash the like button because the more likes, the more likely it is that people see this video and become aware of the horrors going on in South Africa. I didn't even talk about the tortures, the mutilations taking place there. I could, but it's just too vile. Thank you very much for your time, for your patronage. God bless, and have a good day.